That's a hard question. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing fine. It's nice to finally meet you. I know. I'm excited. This is fantastic. <laughs> so, you uh, are an actress. Yes. A model. Yes. But more importantly, an amazing human being. Aww. So we're walking down the street in Los Angeles, California. Yes. The city of angels. The city of angels. And um, and oh, I want to know what. Oh wait. Oh, go back. Go back. Go back. That is so sick. Right there. Don't move. Oh, when you see this, you can flip. It's so good. There's this, there's probably one of the most beautiful lens flares I've ever seen in my entire life right now. Over your head. Maybe it's just apropos. Okay, here we go. All right. So, Olga, um, in, in the only way you know how, break it down. What is your story? Uh, model actress, born and raised in LA. Uh, I'm currently 25 years old. And I'm just living my life here. I love LA. I love the weather. I've met some amazing people. I definitely support what Kevin's doing. Uh, he's spreading mental health awareness and suicide awareness, suicide prevention awareness. Um, and I can kind of relate. When I was about 17, I was in a I was in a police pursuit. I was in one driving. two weeks away from turning 18, still in high school, and we were drinking, uh, underage of course, uh, the guy that was driving was under 21, we had a few drinks, and he was speeding a bit, so the cop tried to pull him over, and then in about two minutes we had, I don't know, maybe 12 cop cars behind us, and he was going over like 100 something miles an hour, we went through Luckily, no cars hit us on the intersection. Uh, and then he went back onto the on ramp. And as he's going on the on ramp, he slightly hit uh, the little barrier that separates the entrance ramp from the rest of the way. And as he hit it, the car basically went parallel to the oncoming traffic, or horizontal, I should say. And then he hit the middle barrier. Um, car spun out of control a few times. By the time we got out of the car, there were about like 20 cops surrounding us with their guns up and we got out one by one. Luckily when we crashed, um, nobody was hurt. I think I walked out with one scratch like right here, it's gone now. It was literally a miracle. Um, I was 17, the cop took me home with my mom. He basically let me go with a warning, you know, I could have gotten in trouble for underage drinking, uh, being past curfew, you know, the list goes on. The cops said that it was literally a miracle that all of us were fine, um, none of us were hurt, and that none of us died, and that they pretty much have never seen anything like that. Uh, and I honestly, I haven't been open with the story, because I'm 25 now, so this happened eight, eight years ago, nine years ago, uh, and I guess... A, Part of me was like, well, you know, what's the point of sharing it? Because it's not going to really benefit anyone. It's, you know, it's not the most pleasant thing to do. But then I started realizing after that um, incident, I had developed like a little bit of anxiety. Uh, trusting people, trusting guys, um, basically almost dying is not. I literally like could have died easily, but actually probably should have um, in that situation because the chances of us being fine was, I don't know, one out of a million, I would say. It made me really grateful. Um, it made me value life and people, just like the normal day-to-day -day experiences. Um, and, and then when you meet like good people in LA, kind of rare. People that you can trust, 
people that want to help you, people that motivate you, people that make you better. It's it's kind of like a breath of fresh air, honestly, and it's so great to just have those people in my life. And I do value like all my close friends, people that I've met, people that have gotten me where I am today, the people that have helped me, people that have motivated me. And that experience just, I don't know, it overall made me really grateful and, and also it kind of brought to my attention like the way that anxiety can come about, which is a, technically a mental health disorder. I do suffer from anxiety, a lot of us do. Uh, mine being a little more severe uh, than most people because of my near-death experience, I don't open up to people as much. I don't really like trust people as much. Um, especially guys because of that experience. Um, I'm kind of closed off. I'm, I try and keep things private. It's, it's hard though, like keeping my life private. Being like a model, an actress, um, you're always like under the public eye basically, you know, social media these days, Instagram, everything else. And I, I try and keep my circle small. I like basically connecting with people that can understand like where I'm coming from uh, and it really is a breath of fresh air when someone understands what anxiety means um, and what it means to someone who has it and I've overcome it in a sense where it's very mild now um, really lucky to honestly have gotten out of that place it was pretty bad when I get anxiety I don't eat um, I I mean I, I would say I eat but the eating that I do is pretty much a joke. It's very, very small. And I've, whenever I have bad anxiety or had it, I would literally have to force myself to eat. I couldn't eat much. I couldn't sleep much. Um, my heart would beat really fast. It, you know, it, it, it was just a really hard place to be in. You can't really like tell people like, hey, I have anxiety. And, um, that's that's what it is and people look at you and they're like okay like I have anxiety too but it's different when I you know when you go through when you go through those experiences and then you realize you develop something and you have to cope with it a lot of people won't understand because they haven't gone through what you've gone through but honestly like I would not change it for the world the, the negative experiences that I went through when I was younger when I, I was a teenager um, they pretty much made me the person I am today. Like, being humble, like, being kind, caring, being grateful, um, appreciating, like, the small things in life. I value, I value a connection with people, like, a real, true connection, whether it's friendship, whether it's a relationship, whether it's, like, family. I just value having that bond over, like, you know, a huge house or like millions of dollars I would rather have genuine people and be happy and like connect in that sense versus money um, you know and when I was younger I always thought that uh, oh, if I just become super rich and like I can buy all these things that's going to buy me happiness and that's going to make me happy and as I got older like money came and I was like oh that didn't make me happy, that buying this and that and that does not make me happy, it's it's people and it's experiences and it's just living life and love and like all the things that basically money can't buy, as cliche as that sounds, is pretty much, pretty much the lesson uh, I definitely took away recently, uh, it's something I learned in the past few years and definitely going through near death experience, it makes you uh, value life for what it is, uh, not the material things that you can buy. So that's my story. Wow. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now, you told us the worst thing that ever happened to you and how it changed you. You told us the worst thing. Oh, yeah. Let's keep walking and let's hear the best thing or the okay. best, per best, either the best thing that ever happened to you and how it changed you or the, the best person in your life and how that person changed you. I had so many great life experiences I honestly couldn't pick one positive empowering powerful impactful any any of the any any of those or all of the above that's a good question 
I think I've had so many small little events that were positive that have brought me to this place. I can't honestly pinpoint one. You know what? I can, actually. Um, when I moved out at 19, uh, it was really hard. Uh, I was on my own. I financially supported myself. Uh, I had just dropped out of college. Um, I didn't really know how I was going to pay rent every month, but I was like 18 years old and I really wanted to pursue acting. And, you know, I started modeling and I was like, you know what, I'm just going to move out on a limb and I'm just going to make, you know, ends meet and figure it out. Um, and that, that made me like really, really independent, uh, taking on like, you know, real bills at 18 when most people are going to college and doing it in an industry where like nothing is stable. It was, it was an experience that was hard, but it was also probably the best experience of my life because uh, it taught me how to be responsible from a really young age and it taught me how to adult really, really fast. And I think it's brought me to this point here today. Like the level of success I've reached um, has, it definitely started when I moved out. It pretty much put a fire under my butt and, uh, and it made me realize like, yeah, you're young, you're a teenager, you're going into your early twenties, but if you work hard now, when you're, you know, in your mid twenties, like I am now, um, you won't, you won't have to work as hard. And, and my parents were, um, my parents were pretty against me moving out so young, you know, being a girl, being 18, but I wouldn't change that for the world. I had the time in my life, but also being able to learn the balance between having fun, being young, but also working hard, being focused on a career, and having tunnel vision. Um, it, 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 it was the hardest point in time in my life, financially. Um, there were so many moments where I just wanted to give up on modeling, where I wanted to give up on acting. I told myself, like, I can't make it, I can't do it. Um, I should just give up, I should just go back to college, I should just get a normal job, um, I should just become, like, an average person and have, like, an average life, like, a normal, let me just work somewhere and just, you know, pay bills and do something boring that I don't like, only because, only because I, like, for those moments in time when I was a teenager, I was just like, you know what, maybe that, like, that's what I need to do, and... I'm so glad I, you know, I power through it and I stuck by everything. I'm, I'm super happy that I didn't really um, give up on, like, my goals and my dreams when I was 18 or 19 because um, if I would have given up back then, I wouldn't be where I am today. I wouldn't have met the people that I met today. And um, I wouldn't have basically been, like, successful or done anything and I feel like now because I did that and I went through um, a tough time and I experienced that it it really like made me the person I am today uh, you know being I'm very stubborn but I also know what it's like to earn things and work hard for them and I guess it's shaped who I am today beautiful being independent yeah. Wow. Okay. So I want to ask you one more question. Okay. And I want you to really, really dig deep and think about this. Okay. Who is or has been the most influential person in your life? Your biggest influence to date. Who is that? What is their name? How do they influence you? And how do they change your life? My parents weren't really supportive of modeling or acting up until maybe the last year and a half, probably because they saw how well I was doing. That's a hard question. Uh, Let's break it down into two categories. Who's the most familial influential person in your life? Someone you're blood related to. And then who is the most influential person in your career? Uh, who's your mentor? And who's the individual in your family that really helped shape you? Not blood related. Uh, I had a mentor um, for entertainment, you know, for modeling and acting. And 
he taught me a lot of things and kind of guided me in a sense that most people can't. Um, you know, my parents weren't in the industry. They aren't and they won't be. Um, and so getting advice from them was difficult because they didn't know what I was doing. They didn't see my vision. Um, they didn't understand the industry. And he came into my life when I was like 18. No, I'd say 19. Um, so about six or seven years ago. And we still talk every day. Um, and he's older than me. And he's impacted me in, in ways where I actually figured out the steps I need to take in order to get to a certain level of success. Um, he, he has guided me like basically what not to do, um, which I'm very grateful for. I feel like I would have been kind of lost um, in the whole acting and modeling world without him. And he was always giving me very honest advice. And it was really great advice. Um, he's a super cool guy. I won't say his name. I want to keep, like I said, a private person. I want to keep everything private to myself. That's for you. That's your stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, but he's really great. Um, and we got close, you know. Basically, I would consider him like almost like a family member, but he's not. Um, and then career-wise, um, I have three people, actually. I have someone who um, motivates me to do better, uh, always boosting my confidence. Um, he's a hard worker himself, uh, very successful, very young, uh, really good friend of mine, um, fun guy, just someone that inspires me uh, to do better and, you know, also gives me solid advice and, you know, good guy. Um, one of my friends and then I would say someone that inspires me in a positive way my mom works so hard and she's always so kind and, and patient and whenever she's going through a tough time she's just a very strong woman very independent and um, she she really has um, inspired me to work really really hard and earn everything fair and square that would be my mom. I can be open about that one. Olga, thank you for sharing all this with us. We really appreciate it. Aww. It means a lot. And your candor and your honesty and your and, and and your ability to reach people through this video is going to be immeasurable. Where do you see yourself in life skill and in career in the next five to ten years? What, what, do you, what, what are your aspirations, goals, Aww. and yeah. awakened visions? Um... I hope to do more movies. I'm really focused on feature films right now. Uh, I just wrapped the season one of Deal or No Deal. Uh, but I want to do more traditional film. Um, I would love to do like a Netflix show or an HBO show or anything on a network um, for TV. With movies, I would want to do studio movies and I would want them to go into theaters. And from now until the next five years, um, that's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to be really focused on. Just grinding out, going to auditions for traditional acting. Um, as much as, like, like YouTube's great and, like, the whole world. Um, I'm just such a sucker for, like, the traditional space of acting. I, I love, I love just being on set and having a script and, like, getting to play a character that is, like, a different version of me where I can put a little bit of myself in them. Um, I think that acting is pretty much different versions of yourself. You're never not playing yourself. You you read a role and you read and you learn about a character that literally is something that you can connect to. Like you can connect to that character. It's really just another version of you. So that that's a great way to express myself. Um, I just love acting. I think I'm a little, like, crazy. <laughs> Not, like, crazy, but in a sense of... I just have so much energy sometimes. Um, and acting is a really great way for me to channel all that energy. And um, I'm, I'm naturally a kind of a creative person when I get, like, ideas all the time. Um, and I feel like acting is just... It's, it's A, challenging. I love being challenged every day. That's so important. You cannot live life without challenging yourself every day. Um, 
challenging yourself every day makes you grow as a person. It makes you better. It makes you stronger mentally, emotionally. Um, it It's so, so, so important. If we just live day to day where nothing was hard, everything was easy, and life would be boring, and we wouldn't grow mentally. And I think challenging yourself mentally is the most important part. Um, and the more work you put in, into something, and the better you become at it, the better you will feel like on the inside. Um, it will it will really change you as a person, and just the way that success feels after you've worked so hard at something and you finally reach like that finish line and you're like I did it there's just nothing in life that's, that's more satisfying than being in that moment where you're like I don't know if I can do it I didn't know if I could do it but I did it and there's just no no feeling that's just there's no feeling in the world that's better then finally reaching your goal or doing something that you didn't think that you could do and getting to a challenge that is finally like, wow, I challenged myself, I did it, I overcame it, and that's it's just the most amazing feeling. Okay, Olga, honestly, this is the last question, okay. I promise. Okay. What do you say to the young lady, to all the Olgas out there in the world, <laughs> trying to make it in Hollywood, trying to make it as a model? Oh. To all the girls who want to find success in their life, what, what, is the, what is the lesson you've learned that you could teach these kids right now so that they stay safe out here in L.A.? I personally don't think I've made it as an actress. I have so many goals that I haven't reached yet, and I'm just like everyone else. Uh, I am grinding out, working hard towards my goals. I, I have a huge vision. I have so many things I want to do in my life. I have so many things that I want to do in my life that will impact other people's lives um, and create positive change in the world and that comes with influence and success. So, you know, the, the, the more successful I am, the more people I can help, which is amazing. Um, and for all the girls out there, just anyone who's trying to do entertainment, whether it's acting, modeling, YouTube, writing, singing, producing, whatever you want to do, photography, you have to be passionate about something to the point where no matter how much money you make or how little money you make, you are stoked every day waking up and doing that because that's what you love. And when you work hard at something for so long and you don't give up and you do it every day and you put your heart and soul and blood, sweat and tears into something, you will start to see success and you will start to see results. And that's the most important part. You need to do something that you're passionate about. And, of course, like with everything, the more you work on something, the better you will become at it. I would say that, like, no matter how hard it gets, you can't give up. And you have to stay positive. Because when you're positive and you know that you can get through anything, you really can get through anything. And then that's, that's when you start to, like really experience like the amazing things that life can give you like life is going to be hard everyone goes through shit uh, everyone has problems whether it's mentally whether it's physically whether it's an insecurity um, it could be family everyone has issues there you're not going to meet a person that doesn't have issues everyone has a problem but that doesn't make someone less than it just means that you have to be strong enough to overcome whatever you're going through and staying positive and just keep on going and just being grateful and happy and living in the moment is the advice that I would give to someone. It's pretty much how I've lived my day-to-day -day life. Don't give up, stay positive, be grateful, be happy, live in the moment and don't get caught up and don't compare yourself it's the worst thing you can do comparing yourself to others it, it'll 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 drive you crazy just know that wherever you're going you will get there on your own time and that's oh. the most important part wow and then finally make sure you go to youtube.com backslash kevin hines backslash or just slash? It's, it's slash I don't know 
Yeah. Oh, no, it's the best. Really? Okay. Yeah, I think it is. No. YouTube.com. Yeah. I think it's Slash. That's probably, yeah, that's, that's probably, that'd be good to know. Yeah, right? I've been getting it wrong this entire time. Oh, no. I think you're right. Either way, it's going to make sense. Right? Yeah. Well, let's watch a look at the vlogs. Yeah, let's do it. Logan slash shop. YouTube.com slash Kevin Hines. Don't forget to subscribe and click that bell.